We've been learning about maturity, manifestation, everything to bring us, to set us in the right point, in the right time to receive the manifestation from God. We've been hearing about it. The word been going forth. The prophet been coming and prophesying and laying hands, giving the word, telling me what does say the Lord, how God is going to do it, when he's going to do it, and the time he wants to do it. And all that is good. But in all that, you got to realize that manifestation can come if your heart is not right. <laughs> so my subject for consideration on today is manifestation in obedient heart. Because I don't care how much you jump around, how much you worship and how much you pray, if your heart is not obedient with the word of God, you ain't seeing nothing. <laughs> you don't want to see nothing coming, nothing coming out. You don't want to receive nothing. And there's nothing wrong with the word of God. It's something wrong with your belief of your heart. It has a word that people don't like to keep in your heart. And the big word is responsibility. <laughs> you are responsible for what you receive from this house and how you apply the word in your heart. To see the word manifestation of God's glory in your life. I'm tired of the people of God saying they don't have. What happened, God? Why well, don't have this? I'm in the same place like last year. I'm in the same place before the year. But your seed, which is the word of God, is not shifting to the belief of your heart to see the manifestation. There's nothing wrong with the word. But I know people wouldn't want to hear this, but there's something wrong with your belief in your heart. Bring it, bring it. Responsibility is a state of fact of having a duty to deal with something. So I show you right there, you have a duty to deal with a responsibility of your heart and how you look at stuff. You know, I always say, people in America is very fortunate. You know why I say that? Because what they call a trial is not a trial until you go where I come from. <laughs> people have less than us and they appreciate more things in life. Amen. Like getting up in the morning. Amen. Walking to the river and getting a little bit of water in the river because they know that water is cold and they know that's the best water. When some people don't have any pipe in their house to get water to use the bathroom, they got to walk a little while. Yes, but you see, they took up the responsibility to make it work early in the morning by the middle of the day. All their responsibility is together. And that's how the word of God should be with us. Yes. You got to take a responsibility. What is your heart producing? Mm -hmm. I hear people say, oh, we got the best prophet in the house, in this house. God is moving. The glory is coming forth. He speaks the word and this and that. But after he does all of that, you still got to be responsibility. Still got to kick in. You gotta be mature in your mind. You see, maturity is a choice and a decision you have to make to something. You have to make that decision to be mature. Because if you don't make a decision to be mature, you will stay right there. What's wrong with a 10 year old child drinking from a baby bottle? That's something is wrong with that. That's mean immaturity didn't kick in. You can't stay like that. You got to shift the place of what God has for you. You got to be responsible. And God been dealing with me about responsibility and the heart of his people. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I responded as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish stuff away. You see, it says it right here. Yes. You can never stop growing in maturity. You gotta cultivate your understanding of the word. Cultivate means when you cultivate in a garden, 
They make sure, as Minister, Minister Daniel said, you gotta make sure the soil is good. So to cultivate something, you gotta put the best thing in there, the word, which is the seed, to grow, to see results. You gotta do it. Don't put your responsibility on nobody else. It's nobody else's fault is where you at. You gotta take responsibility and say, I believe God and his word, and you believe the word or not. Amen. It's no other choice to believe the word or not. Even if it don't look like what God says, you gotta believe the word and be responsible. Pick it up and be mature in your mind and plant that seed and believe God in your heart. But you gotta say to God, is there anything in my heart, Lord, that needs to move from there before he manifests what he gotta do through his word? You see, 2 John 1, 6 says, And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands as he has heard from the beginning. He commanded that we walk in love. And you see, this is a thing that a lot of people don't want to talk about because everybody wants to blame somebody else for what they've been through, what they're going through, or what people does. But nobody want to take responsibility for your own heart and your own emotion and how you think about somebody else. You gotta wake up and say, God, okay, they might do you wrong, but sometimes when people do you wrong, God still wants you to forgive them for doing you wrong so you can be free. That's maturity. You might have a best friend and they back, they, they backstab you and treat you bad. But guess what? You still gotta love them because without love, you can't do nothing. So you gotta take responsibility and say, God, I still love them, but you gotta love them for real. You can't say it with your heart, you can't say it with your mouth and your heart far from it. You gotta take responsibility for everything. And we are keeping back our own self from seeing the manifestation. It's not the devil, it's us. So we gotta take responsibility. You see, you are not born a man, you become a man. You become mature through the word of God. You become a man through the word and applying the word in your mind and your heart over and over and over. Just like you get up in the morning, you take a bath and brush your teeth, just so you gotta do the word, even if it's two minutes, three minutes. God's word could never fail. After a while, you will see the manifestation of what God said for your life. But God knows you are more than a conqueror, so he's leaving it up to you to take responsibility to bring it forth. You see, we are not born a man because we, you, you become a man in your thinking, your understanding, your speech, the way you answer people. And we know none of us here is perfect. We all have our days. Sometimes you go on a job and that one person who irk your mind, you see that person. That's a test. The husband might be getting on your nerve. That's a test. Been there, I could say, I ain't talking about nobody, I could been there. Kids might get on your nerve. That's the test. Because God is looking to see the maturity of your mind and how you, re how you react to that person and what they say. Decision determine direction. Decision determine direction. The decision you make will determine the direction you go today. You gotta get that direction, it's a choice. God is not gonna come down from heaven and force you to do nothing. It's a choice you gotta make to change things. It's a choice you gotta make. Psalms 119 and 105 says, the word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So let me tell you something, you could be in the darkest tunnel. I don't care if you're coming home late in the night. I don't care if you live on the worst block ever. Long as you keep that word in your heart, God is going to shine that word by your feet and let you see where you're going. It's like you're going somewhere and you're seeing it's light. The word is like a light. It's going to shock in the darkest moment. I don't care if it's abuse. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what people think about your past. It's what God says. This word is true. And if God said you are a new creature, you are a new creature. Because if you go wrong, 
with a bulletin board and ask everyone to take a check of what they used to be and what God bought them from, you'll be surprised how many people could identify with what you've been through. That's right, that's right, that's right. But you gotta take responsibility for the manifestation to come forth. I know Zion been, Zion been here for seven years, but we wasn't here in this building just so. We was in a living room. Small living room, but we believe God for a big vision because of the word that was planted, and we believe God for the manifestation because the prophet had a direction to take us to a destination of what he saw that sometimes we couldn't see. But it's a choice. You gotta be responsible. Responsible. I don't care what happened to you when you were small, but you gotta really be responsible and say, I'm not the same person that the enemy say I am. I'm gonna get what God say I could get. I'm gonna be loved and I'm gonna go forth. But it's a responsibility, but it takes a mature mind. And the word is the only thing that can mature your mind. Nothing else can work but the word. I don't care who encourage you, but if you don't have this word, is nothing going to happen. And I'm glad Minister D talked about watching over your Proverbs 4.23. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. I don't know if you all was watching Life in the Word, but this week, Life in the Word really touched me. <laughs> because the man of God was talking about some things you see, we got to take responsibility for how we feel about people. It's not the people, it's us. Because let me tell you, when God free you, you don't care what people say. All you care about is what God says. All you care about is what God has and the purpose he has for our life to do. He put us here not to just, we are chosen people. Things might look how you want it to look now? But we are chosen people. If you get up every day and you say, I'm taking responsibility and I'm going to see the manifestation, you read that word, you become after what you said in that word. And you got to take. It says, God, your heart to do all diligent. And you know, I always say, American football is a good football. But let me tell you something about one thing about soccer. The goalie, the person who's prevent the ball from coming in the net, is the most hard-working person. You know why? He don't care how he throw his body to prevent that ball from going in the net. And that's how you gotta be. You gotta guard your heart from all issues. So the enemy's trying to put that ball in the net, you gotta be watching to see. You can't come off your post. If that ball come this way, you throw your body. It takes everything. I don't know about some people, but it, sometimes it takes everything to get your mind together. Yeah. People say, don't take all that. Yes, it does. It does. Sometimes when you get up in the morning, everything went about losing your mind. So sometimes it takes more than people think just to get your mind together. So that's how you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart like that sucker player who the ball is kicking from the enemy stuff. You got to throw your body. You got to block. Everything that the enemy come in, you got to block. And you will use the people closest to you. Yes, yes. The ones who are supposed to be closest to you to get on your nerves or to do something against you. But you got to guard your heart. You can't make the enemy get to your heart. You got to guard it. Because the enemy is after your heart. As long as he gets your heart, issues come. The enemy, enemy purpose is to stop you. I'm going to read, read Jonah 117. So let me give you a quick rundown of Jonah. Jonah was told by God to go to Nineveh to preach the word. But because of his heart, he found, he found the people of Nineveh didn't deserve being delivered from their wickedness. So he went against God and went to Tarshish. And people think like that. 
people will think that God shouldn't bless you or shouldn't do things for you, just like how Jonah taught. Jonah didn't go to Tarshish because he was afraid to go to Nineveh. His mind was made up. These people wasn't worthy enough to be delivered from God. And people think like that because God is God. Whoever God tells you to do things for, that's what you got to do. You got to take the word and be obedient in it. So that's why Jonah left. People say, oh, Jonah left because, you know, he was scared. No, Jonah left because God told him to go to Nineveh because of the wickedness that was going on in Nineveh. But he think like this, well, I don't have to go and help these people. I don't have to free them. Sometimes people want to be God, but you gotta give, get your direction straight from God to help other people. And it says, And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Okay. You see, in the beginning of this scripture said, God speak to Jonah. It wasn't the devil. To go do something. But because of his judgment and his rebelliousness in his heart against what he think God should do for another person, got him in the belly of the whale. I don't care where you run. God will find you. And they said he was in his belly of the way for three days and three nights. Seawater, I don't know, I'm from the islands. I'm always going swimming when I was small. But when seawater gets in your system, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to feel like that. So you can imagine what was coming in the fish. He was tormented. But I love Jonah for this. God preserved Jonah in the belly of the way for his purpose. He preserved him. He could have killed Jonah, but he didn't. He preserved him to teach him about his heart. So he got three days and three nights in his belly and his fish to think about what he did. And if God got to do that to some people, to think about what they got to do, you're going to still serve him willingly or unwillingly. So we got to take responsibility. Our hands is too short to box with God. I remember when I first started, I used to fight with God all the time. No, I'm not doing this. No, I'm not doing that. Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm, I'm not saying that. No. Mm -mm. But God have a way of getting your attention because if he has to give you sleepless, tormented night, he will do that. You see, people didn't understand Jonah. God preserved him. And I love it because while he was preserving him, it said that Jonah started to pray to God because he knew he was a God of everything. So you know what he developed there in his it is going through. That's not because you're going through. No, that all means manifestation is not coming. You could be in the heart of your manifestation going through. So that shows me right there that as God was preserving Jonah, he was teaching Jonah how to worship him yes. in his devastation. Yes. He was teaching Jonah how to depend on him in his devastation and changing his heart so he could go to set free the people. Amen. He preserved him. That shows you, even when it's disobedient, God loved Jonah. He kept him. And even if we don't do things right, even in our disobedience, God still said, you still my child. you still my mighty woman of valor. I don't care what you did last night, what you did two hours ago. God said, you still belong to him. you still my man of virtue. you still my man of honor. So I love this with Jonah because I sat there and I said, I can't imagine being in a belly away for three days and three nights. But I can imagine the torment mm -hmm. of that water coming in, the seaweeds coming in, wrapping around him. But God preserved him for his purpose and his benefit, and that's what God is doing. Manifestation is here. Amen. You might be going through, but you're in the seed of it. You're in the heart of your manifestation. Do not give up. Take responsibility and press on. Do not stop. Do not look sideways. Press to God because the manifestation is here. The enemy wants you to give up. Do not give up. Take your responsibility and study the word. Plant your seed. Shift yourself because God did a shift last Sunday. And God is saying the heart of the people have to come up. So, and they have to shift so the manifestation could come forth. You got to keep your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because sometimes you can leave church and you go home and the enemy will come. 
like a roaring lion. But you gotta say, God, you said. Remind God of his word. Don't shift. And let me tell you something. Don't think that all of us have an issue with our heart in somehow or the other. Even if you roll your eyes, you might curse somebody else, somebody might roll their eyes. It's the same thing. You might see somebody and say, I really like her. And somebody might be backbiting somebody. It's the same thing. You gotta guard your heart. You can't make nothing comes in your heart or come out your heart. You see, I love Jonah. Because after he finished all that, he went and do God's will. I bet he did. After three days of thinking about what he did. Because people could get judgmental. Because they think they're doing everything right, they're judging another person. Because they think they shouldn't help somebody else, they judge them. But God got his way of getting your attention. You gotta guard your heart. Don't make nobody put you in a place where you be judgmental. Every day you pray, say, God, if there's any issue in my heart, take it away. If there's any issue in my mindset, take it away. And let me tell you, this house is moving forward. Because God has shifted us last Sunday was like no other Sunday. Amen. And God been dealing with a heart. And God been dealing because God said everything is here already, but why, 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 why are you not seeing it? It's because just check your heart. And you are in the midst of your manifestation. I don't care what it looks like. They might want to throw you out your house. They might repossess your car. Your family might be calling your names. You might lose your job. This, you might go to the doctor, they might say something wrong with your body. Don't believe the lies. Because you are in the midst of your manifestation. Jonah was in the midst. He said, no God, I'm going. Because those people don't deserve. Who is us to see who don't deserve love from God? Amen. Who is us to say God don't deserve grace and mercy for somebody else? Amen. We are not God. God loves all of us the same way. He has no favorites. He has no favorites, no preference. Who you want to bless, he will bless. Yes. But if you can think like that, that means you're not taking responsibility for your heart. Mm -hmm. You've got to check your heart Amen. and let God do it. And Zion, I want you all to be encouraged because what about to happen in this house? Eyes have not seen or ears haven't heard what God is about to do in Zion. I don't care what you're going through. Manifestation is here. Amen. Be blessed.